that we have started recording and when I get done, remind me, stop the recording. Okay, recording now. Welcome everybody to our test, our unofficial virtual meeting. And again, we are doing this as a test to see if we can do this in the future. Um, there are the, the tips on the chat window for how to use the Zoom. And during the meeting, I ask that everybody stay on mute. I've left it so that you can all unmute yourselves. But uh, when you're not talking, please uh, keep yourself muted for now. So with that, I'm going to hand the meeting over to David, our president, David, WA7DY, you now have the floor. And let me, uh, well, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> I can unmute myself. You yeah. can unmute so, yourself. So um, thanks everybody for joining. I see we have 46 participants, um, which is great. I really, I really appreciate you all being here. Um, I know it's a, it's a learning curve. I never used the Zoom client before Wednesday. So um, I think we're all, we're all learning together and that's fine. Um, just when you go nuts, make sure you do it on mute <laughs> and we'll be fine. So um, as Jim mentioned, this is kind of a test for us. So this isn't an official meeting. We won't be, uh, you know, we won't be taking attendance and figuring out if we have a quorum. We won't be doing business. Um, we will be following roughly kind of a traditional club meeting agenda. So we're going to go through some officer reports. We'll take a break um, and then we'll have a, a presentation. So, um, so hopefully you can, can all play along with us at home. Um, before we sort of dive into all the content, um, I would like to thank Jim, KE7JIM. Jim has spent a ton of time making sure that like every board member, every trustee can get online, everybody learns how to use Zoom, everybody can get installed, whether we were uh, tech savvy and all he had to do was point us in the right direction all the way to like getting on the phone with people and walking them through installs. Jim has been amazing. He's sunk a ton of time into this. Um, so I hope you all can appreciate, and, and I certainly do appreciate Jim's support. Um, he's really been awesome, and this wouldn't be happening uh, without him. So, so thanks to Jim. A virtual, virtual applause. Um, so a couple notes on club meetings. Um, if the lockdown situation continues, the board's intention is to figure out how we would do an official, you know, uh, business meeting, um, which would, which may include voting new members in and elections and things like that. So we'll be figuring that out over the next month in terms of guidance, like how, you know, if you ask yourself, how do I know if there'll be a club meeting? Um, the club will basically mimic whatever the state guidance is. So if the state says, you know, no gatherings of more than 50 people, then we won't have a club meeting. So, um, Whatever the state guidance is, is what we're using as our, our ground rules um, and sort of our, our boundaries. So a um, couple other notes. If you know anybody who has applied for a membership, um, <laughs> obviously uh, we, don't, we, we think maybe we'll have a voting meeting next month. So uh, we'll ask them to, to hopefully come back next month. Um, we do have a policy in the club that we expire uh, new membership applications within, I think, 90 days if they don't come back. We're suspending that uh, during this time. So, um, sorry, I'm stealing some of Phil's thunder there. Sorry, Phil. Um, I'm just trying to think of various things that people have emailed me and asked questions about just so I can answer them to the group. But I think, I think that's about it for me for now. Again, thanks everybody for being here, and I'm going to hand it off to uh, to Phil, he's going to give us the vice president's report. All right, can you all hear me? Okay, very good. You're good. All right, awesome. Thanks. Hello, folks. Uh, my name here is uh, Phil, K7PI. I'm your vice president, and somebody just shared their screen there. I'll wait a minute. Jim, thank you. And uh, yes, uh, we, it's like we actually do have a virtual quorum here today, but it's, not, it's still not an official meeting. We're just kind of testing things out for today. 
And we do have a membership application status report. We're not going to be voting on anybody, unfortunately, today. It's not an official business meeting. But uh, we do have seven applications currently awaiting membership approval. Six of them, we actually had six of them come through uh, last board meeting that we approved. So we have that to vote on for the next official meeting. And five applications will be reviewed by the board in April. So, so we're getting pretty good. Uh, it's very encouraging to see this much interest in our club by newer members. It's like I haven't had this many applications in a while. It's very encouraging. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for now. I didn't see anybody in there with uh, any tenure stuff or anniversaries in there. So I guess I'll turn it back to you, uh, David. It's a neat hum. Um, so Next up on the agenda is uh, Michelle, WB7AYU. Michelle, you wanted to give us a secretary report. You need to unmute. Okay. Are we there? We can hear you. Go ahead. Well, I don't know why I don't see myself, but that's okay. Don't need to. Uh, I just have a uh, very brief uh, secretary report. Uh, there has uh, been no correspondence uh, directed to the secretary from uh, the mailbox, the POB. And uh, want to welcome uh, everybody. I hope you're seeing me or not. Um, got some notes here I'm trying to find. I failed to get up early enough to... Uh, clean up this mess here. Um, was one other thing. I, I uh, indeed wanted to thank Jim for getting everything running here. It was a little difficult for a while. And uh, I can't see my other notes here at the moment. But I'll uh, have something for good of the order when we get there. So uh, uh, back to you, uh, Dave. All right, thanks for that. Uh, next on our agenda, oh, Tim, Tim figured out how to use the thumbs up. I like that, uh, that was good. Uh, so next on our agenda is Scott, Chairman of the Board Report. Okay, so I should be up and uh, rolling here. You are good. So what we're going to do is we're gonna actually take nominations today for the elections that were not going to hold this month. Um, we're inclined to only do the elections um, when we physically can get together the next time. Uh, the board will discuss this again and confirm it, but that's our current that's our current thoughts on on things. The other thing that's coming up that's pretty important, I think, to the club is uh, we need a new newsletter editor. Uh, Mike uh, has said he will only do it through June, so we need a new newsletter editor. My understanding that that implies that you need to be able to run Word to use the templates that he's developed, and uh, then just put the stories in the Word, um, you know, print the PDF, the, the Word document, and that becomes the club newsletter. So technically it isn't uh, a, a very difficult job. We've also discussed this uh, before to stop uh, mailing uh, the newsletters. And I think we will, uh, there were some folks that at the meeting where this was discussed that said that they would be willing to volunteer to mail uh, the newsletter printout and mail the newsletter to the folks that uh, don't get it electronically currently. currently. Um, <coughs> so um, I think um, we're going to look for a newsletter uh, editor. And if you are interested in helping the club in this regards, uh, please. Um, send an email to uh, me, ag7t, at sign net, and uh, I'll connect you and uh, Mike up uh, to do this, or you can contact Mike directly. 
So that's what I have on the newsletter editor. For nominations, I'm going to use chat for that. Um, so if you have a nomination for uh, president, uh, please enter that into a chat message right now. This will help Michelle um, uh, get it uh, copied. So nominations for president. <coughs> what do we have right now is David, uh, WA7DY, as I recall, uh, is the current, is uh, the nominee we already had. Um, so I'm not seeing anything in chat. Is it working? Let's see. Yeah. All right. So it's working. All right. So we're going to go to, I lost my list someplace. All right. We're going to go to vice president. So vice president, um, um, I believe uh, uh, Bill K7PIA has agreed to run again for that. Uh, other nominations for vice president. I'm not seeing any nominations for vice president. Other than Phil. Okay, so we'll go to secretary. Uh, Secretary Michelle will not be running again. She's uh, term limited. Uh, we do have a, um, a nominee uh, from a previous meeting, and I believe it's, it's James. Uh, and if I can read his call sign off of the little screen, I can tell you who it is. Uh, WQ7H. Uh, is that correct there, James? Yep. Okay. So any other nominations for secretary? Okay. For um, treasurer, uh, we have uh, Jim, uh, K7JIM, who is uh, currently in that role. Any, uh, and all, um, uh, treasurer nominees need, have to be vetted by the board. So if you uh, nominate yourself or someone else nominates, the board will have to review the nominee. Yeah, I, it's because I'm leaning forward like this, that cloud of smoke happens. Um, I'll try to lean back a little bit. Thanks. Um, so, um, uh, nominees for treasurer. Oh, come on. I know somebody out there wants to be treasurer. It's so much fun. <laughs> I'm good for continuing on another year. Okay. So, treasurer. Now, let's see here. Activities manager. Uh, we're looking for nominations for activities manager. Uh, Mark uh, has said that he didn't want to do it another year. So we're looking for a nominee. Did we already have one? No, there wasn't. Nobody stepped up last time. Okay. So we need an activities uh, manager. Uh, it isn't uh, too bad of a job. Uh, you get to run the raffles. You get to go buy some neat stuff from various uh, places. And you get um, a lot of applause at the December um, meeting for any of the big prizes. So um, please, uh, you can nominate yourself. Um, and that would be fine. Mark, do you have anything to add?
I think one thing that's important to note is we do have a lot of support for anybody coming into any new position. Um, you've got literally dozens of people around that have done your job before. Um, so it would be great to see somebody new take a shot at this. But, you know, bear in mind, we're, we have lots of people that are here to help. Um, Sam, I believe that Robin is a current treasure, uh, trustee. So uh, he wouldn't be able to, to do that. Like David Ockren's uh, comment, we should raffle off the position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could go do random choices, but we don't have an audience here. And I I'm, I'm sort of don't want to go through the uh, participant list and just uh, look for um, that. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think that's correct. How how would these raffles work virtually? I don't know. We'll have to have a discussion about it. All right, I didn't see any nominees um, for activities managers. For trustees, um, the trustee positions, there are two of them uh, that are even. I did one. I put in uh, David Okrent, W7DAO. Whether he uh, accepts or uh, not, activities uh, manager? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I appreciate the nomination. The problem is, is uh, one, I haven't been at the club very long, and two, I'm not quite sure how much time I have uh, to do things like shopping and get stuff and things like that, or I'll be at every meeting, so I can't commit to that right now. But I do appreciate the nomination. Okay. Uh, I also see how uh, said Keith, KJ7ALM. Keith, are you on the call? Hello. I believe Keith. I believe Keith is nominated for a trustee. Okay. Yeah, I. Uh, this is Keith here, KJ7ALM. Um, I could have started a new job since the nomination, but I believe I can uh, uh, step up and and try to uh, to help out as a trustee. I've heard from various people that it's a uh, an easy one to start with um, for the club as far as time and uh, stuff like that. So uh, I, I think I can still do that. Okay, so who else was nominated? I think we actually had two nominees, as I recall, for uh, trustees. Who's the second nominee? Was it Steve? I'm, I'm looking for my notes. I think uh, Steve WB7AAV, I think he declined, but I think Steve Cook might have. Uh... Yeah, Steve Cook, I think he did. He's not on the call, though, is he? Well, I thought I saw him. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be on the call. Uh, he does have to say he would want to be nominated, and that may be from the previous meeting. Scott, uh, uh, in would, you, would you state which trustee position you're discussing <laughs> nominations for? No, we're, we do them bulk, is what we always do. Uh, we always take nominations for the even positions or the odd positions. We do not assign the position number until we actually do the vote. Uh, we, vote on, we vote on the trustees or a particular even position, all the trustee nominees. And, um, and if one wins, then we take them off and do it for the other in, in this particular case, because there are only two. That makes sense, Michael? Uh, information? Roger. Go ahead. Uh, Scott, I, one thing I wanted to do at the start was 
get the minutes out, which I do have here. And the nominations we have uh, currently for uh, trustee is um, still looking now. Got him here somewhere. Sorry. Our, um, I think we covered it. Uh, Steve Cook, KD7 IQL, and yep. Keith Hartman, we just heard from, I think, KJ7 ALM, and uh, trustees' terms are for two years, you mentioned, and uh, nominations will continue until voting today, which well, it's not going to happen, uh, apparently, but uh, those were the current ones as of uh, the uh, February 15th uh, general meeting. Okay, we have another nominee that came at this meeting, and that is Dan uh, KG7DAB, who agreed to accept the nomination for trustee. Thanks, Dan. No problem. I know I'll knock it out of the ballpark. <laughs> okay, do we have any other <clears throat> nominees for any of the positions? I'll just open it for general nominations. Well, if we don't have any nominees for anything, I don't think we have to worry too much about the difficulties of doing an online vote because it sounds like we're only going to have voting for one position. <laughs> We can't pull that off we're going to be in trouble well we still have to do it according to the bylaws and so that's what presents the problem for us really uh, and how would we do voting over virtual if that's the case we would have to have a, a separate system from zoom that was anonymous and uh, would allow telling the votes um, for the the position there is a uh, there there we're is required, a we're required to have a silent a silent anonymous vote. Zoom supports an anonymous vote. The only weak point would be if we had non-members on the call, uh, they could vote. Um, but yeah, we tested that out um, during one of the meetings. Um, yeah. But like David says, that that's the weak spot is. If we do have non-members, they could be voting, but it it is yeah. an anonymous. I clicked on it and made it anonymous. Um, what we could do is have one trustee and actually see the names and not do it anonymously and then keep it anonymous to himself. And then they could go and look at the results and take out anything that is anyone that is not a member, but that would be yeah. a lot of work. Two other yeah. Well, if that's what we have to do to, to do this, then, you know. So two other options. Um, one would involve what Ivy mentioned, which is boot non-members off the call when we do the vote. Um, another option would be to use math. So imagine you have, you know, you have a quorum. Imagine you have five guests, you do an anonymous vote, and if the margin of victory uh, or loss is greater than five, then the, you know, if the visitors voted, then it wouldn't have changed um, the outcome. So David, David, um, let's have a, another little board meeting one of these nights. And the other night I did test the putting people on hold and let's have a board meeting and then I'll, put a couple of people on hold and then have everybody vote and see how that turns out. And then we'll just anonymously leave one or two that doesn't vote and see how that, we can play with that. Yeah. But I, think I think that might be a good idea. No, we're going to have a, a normal board meeting. Yeah. In, uh, uh, in April, on the April day, um, 715, you know, normal board. We could try it then if you want it. Sounds good. Um, all right. I think that I'm done with my stuff. Uh, officers, what did I forget? I think you're good. 
Okay, back to net control. <laughs> Guess that's me. So for my next one, I'm hoping I didn't coordinate with Hal. I just sent a couple emails where I said, "Hey, I'd like to get a, I'd like to have a swap meet report." I never heard back from Hal, or particularly asked him if he was ready. But he's smiling, so I'm assuming he's he's ready. I know every I've gotten a lot of uh, questions from people. How did the swap meet go? Is the club about to implode? So Hal, if you could give us a brief update with whatever information you have at this point. Yeah, I uh, am I on there? Can't You're on. Good. You're, I don't see it. Well, good. good. Um, thanks to Jim, who sent out this morning the uh, financials for the uh, swap meet. And um, if I read this right, it looks like we may just about broke even. <laughs> which means we probably won't be uh, uh, providing an input to the uh, club for much uh, in the way of profits. Um, Jim can probably step up and comment about that in a little bit. But uh, as we expected, the gate was down, um, probably 45% uh, uh, close to 50, but you know, uh, the gate was down, looked like about 45%, and that's about what we saw. Uh, in our, uh, uh, far as the table sales, uh, we were uh, not down that much. In fact, we were actually up for booths uh, from the last two years and Country Store was uh, did about its average uh, uh, good income. Uh, the helper sales were, were maybe down just a little bit, but not very much. So our biggest down was the, the, the gate. Um, our, on the expenses side, uh, we're up uh, about uh, five, $400 from last year on, for, for, the, for the fairground side rental. So uh, we're still waiting for uh, bills to come in from uh, golf cart, uh, pallet jacks, uh, country story refunds, and our security bills. So we've got maybe uh, another thousand dollars in um, expenses to come in on, on this. So it looks like our bottom line was was uh, uh, we're going to be down eight or nine thousand dollars. Whoops! What happened here? Oh. Oh, I've gone ahead and um, oh, there you go. Pulled up uh, the yeah, great. I thought maybe I did something wrong there. <laughs> update no. <laughs> yeah, so there's uh, there's uh, Jim's uh, input and uh, uh, however, I think that uh, everybody uh, that came enjoyed it. Um, it, it was fun. Uh, except for Friday, uh, unfortunately, there, there was, as everybody knows, there was the uh, the person that uh, died of a heart attack, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much a shame about that. Um, and uh, the post dinner uh, affair at uh, the main garden uh, was great. Uh, we had almost forty in attendance, and it was food is super. And uh, it was really great to have it there at the main garden. I don't know how he's doing with the, the current uh, situation going on right now, but uh, um, hopefully uh, things will work. Let that order will get scored away before too long. Um, what else did I have? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, we'll probably have a post of. Uh, Swap meet meeting uh, uh, when we get time and we can get together on that. Um, so that's about all I have regarding the swap meet. Any questions? Yeah. So there was a chat uh, question from Jeff. Yeah, the, we we are missing a few uh, inputs. The pallet jack um, bill hasn't come in. So up at the top. Um, there's pending income reporting, uh, some worker donation, and the final swap meet dinner sales. Uh, there's is a couple of 
country store donations and I still need to go through the Friday worker food donation. As far as expenses, I'm still pending the golf cart rental. Last year it was 187.17 and the pallet jack it was uh, last year was 676. Uh, there are a couple of refunds that I still need to do for booths and things like that and things that were paid by Michael Dinkelman. So I still need to review that and make a few refunds. Uh, and then we still are missing the security, which uh, was 360 last year. And I know it's going to be higher this year because they were, they had sent us a letter earlier saying that the rates were going to be a little higher. So like Hal said, um, the gate sales, the front gate was down. Um, this year we had 8,855. Last year it was 16,100. So it is down. Um, and I will work on this as things come in and give a final report in a few weeks before the audit. Back to net. Thanks, Jim. David, you're back. All right. I was just making sure I uh, didn't have any final words. Thanks for the update, uh, Hal, and thanks, uh, Jim, for, for sharing the financials. I see an advantage of this virtual meeting, and then it's so easy to show things like that, um, which is awesome. So let me switch to field day. There you go. Ivy, see my... See my field day picture? Look, I'm at field day. Um, so far, the state has not closed the state parks. So, um, you know, who knows how long the lockdown's gonna go for, but at this moment, field day is on. Um, so again, we're gonna follow whatever the guidance is from the state. Obviously, uh, guidance from the state's gonna apply quickly and cleanly to the state parks. So, um, but as far as we know, uh, field day is still a go. Um, we have a few minor uh, th uh, things to follow up on in the next couple months, but the biggest thing that we have to do is we need to reinstall our generator in the equipment trailer. So if you were, if you were, oh, I see Steve. I see Steve Cook is also at field day. Thanks, Steve, uh, for the virtual support. I appreciate it. Um, but the one big job, you know, that we need to do is to prepare. Uh, the equipment trailer and by reinstalling the generator. So we, the generator is a uh, an RV style generator that is um, installed in the equipment trailer, meaning that it sit, uh, meaning that it sits in the equipment trailer and has gas lines and exhaust and things that go that go in and out. Um, so uh, look for a message from me in the coming weeks, assuming we're all still here, uh, to put together. A party, uh, <laughs> uh, put together a party of a, of some people to come out and help with that. Um, so we would appreciate a hand. Uh, fortunately, the generator is in the equipment trailer and more or less sitting in the spot that it needs to be, which is great because that thing weighs like I don't. Ivy Ivy knows how much it weighs. It's greater than two hundred pounds, less than three hundred pounds. It's very heavy, two fifty ish. Yeah, so. Um, Anyway, it's, it's in there. So other than that, things are looking good. Uh, at the swap meet, good news for Jim, uh, K7JGM and all tower climbers. Uh, at the swap meet, we were able to acquire for the club one of those platforms, you know, that platform that you hook on to the tower. So when you're standing up there, you have a nice flat surface to stand on there. So I'm sure Jim, uh, Jim's feet will appreciate that. So that'll be going into the equipment trailer. Um, and other than that, uh, we're we're just tracking the usual setups. All the reservations have already been made um, and things like that. We have, uh, I think we have a, uh, an event uh, filing that we need to do with the state for the park. Uh, but other than that, it's all still a go. So uh, we'll update you if we, uh, if we hear anything different. Hey David, question from uh, Ivy regarding the awards dinner. Um, just a quick update to everybody on the awards dinner. We do um, have that on hold for now. Deposits have been placed 
Um, we're not going to lose any money right now. And <laughs> frankly, because of what's happening, we're going to really stick to our guns and not lose anything. Um, I talked to them and I told them that we really enjoyed the facilities and we would just like to hold and not lose our spot. So as we come on board, um, you know, get out of this time, hopefully May, June, July, they said that, yeah, we're, we can go ahead and reschedule. So for right now, the awards dinner is on hold. If anybody, um, there was 33 people who did pay for that. If they want to withdraw, uh, you can send me an email and I'll uh, refund your money. Back to net. Will that refund come in the form of cash or will it come as Taco Bell gift certificates as I suggested? Um, yeah, Taco Bell gift certificates if you want. No, just kidding. I didn't suggest that. Um, Dan mentioned the parks closed yesterday. I just checked the website real quick. He's correct. The parks did close and um, they wouldn't be accepting our special event, though the current restriction is through April 30th. So uh, we still have a, almost a full two month margin. So hopefully, uh, Hopefully uh, that'll change. But for now, technically, because it says <clears throat> through April 30th, um, technically field day is still on. So that's the field day update. Uh, Jeff is asking when we think we might know when there's a new banquet date. I think the answer is we, we don't know. We don't, yeah. Um, Jeff, we don't know. As we, we will just have to wait until the governor has um, taken down the restrictions and reopened the, the bars and restaurants. So for right now, we're just going to be on hold. Any other questions? Um, set them up on a chat or jump in real quick, I guess, because we're um, we're at that point. It looks like on the agenda for the good of the order. Yeah, Jim, you want to you want to take over and moderate good of the order? I know there's some people have some items. So if anybody has an item now, um, one at a time, let's. Do it just like a radio net. Come forward and uh, let us know what you got. This is Bill, KL7BH, uh, audio only, no video. Uh, I did want to provide an update. Uh, as many of you know, many of the conferences, conventions, including the Dayton Hamvention, have been canceled or postponed. Uh, as of Wednesday, CPAC uh, sent out an email saying that it is still on. Of course, that's subject to uh, levels higher than, uh, than we know. And uh, also, we ha haven't heard anything from MicroHams Digital Conference, but uh, nothing to indicate that it has been canceled up to this point. And back to net. Hey, thanks, Bill, for that update. Dan, you have your hand raised. Do you have something for the good of the order? Dan, KG7, DAB. Um, oh, you know, I think, yeah, gosh, that was so long ago. I forgot. I will think about that and get back to you. Um, one thing, since I'm on, on camera here, um, some good news is, um, since the tech net and social net have started, um, the use of the repeater is up, um, even off social net hours. So that's just some good news that I'd like to, it way up as Phil is saying, it is way up. I mean, activity off social net hours is really up. And um, I'd just like to thank everybody who's participating in the social net that the repeater is getting used on a regular and daily basis now. Cool. Thanks for the update, Dan. Um, looks like Tim Kane has raised his hand. Tim, you have the yeah. floor. Can you hear me okay? Yep. We okay. can hear you now. I just wanted to um, suggest that the club might want to consider 
uh, sending a, a condolences card to the family of the uh, gentleman who passed away at the uh, swap meet? Yes, I agree on that. And um, Hal or Michael, if they can send me their information, I think we need to do a refund on the tables and things like that. Michelle, you raised your hand in the video. You're, I think I you're did. on. Yeah. Am I on there? Yep. I, uh, I can uh, take care of a card and stuff once I get that approval that was just asked and, um, and get the addresses involved. So. Okay, so at this time, let's um, just do a raise your hand in the video or raise your hand if we uh, should go ahead and I think it's going to be a hands down approval. Does everybody approve sending a condolence card? I think that's good. They use this to test the vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I we have. I can't find my uh, raise my hand thing. So yes, uh, that's a that's a great idea. Okay. So if everybody, let's see, can lower your hands. I'm going to go ahead and clear that. Comment. Yeah, go ahead, comment. Yeah, Dave, uh, Dave, KB7PSN. Uh, a reminder, the MCOM Academy has been canceled. Okay. When was that originally scheduled, the MCOM? It would have been the uh, weekend after the April club meeting. At oh, the yeah, that's right. Seattle College. So yep. basically they have canceled it, uh, emails, et cetera, comacademy.org. Yeah, I remember that now. Okay, do we have anybody else with um, good of the order? Come now. Michelle. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I remembered what uh, I was at the uh, start of the meeting, but I was still kind of waiting for a email back from the board and uh, of uh, if I can uh, send uh, email directly to uh, uh, the uh, members only that wanted it about the uh, minutes and not looking for approval of them, but if uh, people want the general meet, uh, meeting minutes, I can uh, publish them to them by email. And uh, look at my notes now. Thanks everybody for help on the swap meet, especially in uh, my area of hospitality. And uh, I'm still looking for a next uh, chairman per person for hop, uh, swap meet uh, hospitality, and I can really help them. On a personal note, very personal note, uh, general guidelines I'm following for sheltering in place. And I've done that since the day after the swap meet on uh, what, March 8th. And the, yesterday, because I'm uh, qualified, meet the criteria that uh, has been set out, I uh, went through a drive through swap meet on, uh, I can't read. I went through a, a drive in uh, swab test and that came, and that came back negative uh, yesterday. And it was a quite simple thing to do. The criteria for that, by the way, uh, is uh, I'm an existing patient, and I'm age uh, over age qualified, and I have a condition, and uh, so that was really simple to do, and uh, so I've just been um, kind of. Um, um, can't think of what other word when I wanted. 
Sheltering in place. Exactly. Thank you. Duh. And <laughs> and anyway, uh, I guess that's all I had. That's kind gotcha. of uh, not so much ham radio, but uh, that's my good of the order. Uh, back to that. That's good news to hear that you're uh, negative. So um, from what I've seen on the news, that test for the COVID coronavirus, um, it looks like it was up your nose with a rubber hose or something like that. That doesn't look very um, comfortable. But anyway, um, hopefully everybody stays healthy and um, try to shelter in place and let's ride this out, flatten the curve as they say it does. It is scary and um, like Michelle says, I also have been trying my best to shelter here in place. It is good to know that um, it looks like the majority, I haven't heard from anybody that, you know, has tested positive. Um, so we may have all escaped from our um, event down at the Puyallup. So uh, one other thing that I noticed in the uh, chat room, uh, we are going to do the no normal board meeting on Zoom. And Michelle, if you can go ahead and the uh, meeting minutes, let's go ahead and just publish them in the relay as opposed to um, sending them to the membership. I think that would be a better way to continue it. Well, um, I think I already have sent them out to uh, uh, the relay editor. Okay. And uh, that brings up something else probably, but uh, I will continue to do that and um, wait for uh, official approval once uh, we get to that point there. Back to you. Okay. Uh, Ivy was mentioning that she came back with a pink bottle of some sort of fluid. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what would be what kind of fluid that sounds like. That sounds really ew. Um, so you might want to just uh, get rid of that since you don't know where it is or what it has. Um, and I think if there is no other good of the order, we can go back to David for a presentation. Last chance, last call for uh, good of the order. Okay, I'm seeing some chuckles out there from the throw it away. <laughs> so, um, David, how about we hand it over to you and uh, have the presentation? Let's uh, let's do this. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've been in this seat for like an hour and a half already. So why don't we take um, why don't we take a five minute break? Five Sounds minute break. Yeah. So I'll come back at uh, or maybe make it six minutes. We'll come back at ten fifty five. I'll start at ten fifty five. So I am going to go ahead and. Re and pause the recording for now so that everybody can take a five minute break. Um, we will resume at 10.55. Cool, thank you. We are now recording again. David, you have the floor. Are you gonna, can you mute everybody again? Um, yeah. Hit the magic, the magic button. All right, thanks again to Jim for moderating and operating this, I, I, I appreciate it. So um, let's, uh, let's dive into my presentation. So it's a little simple, but it's also kind of technical today. Um, let me, hold on, assume I, know, assume I know what I'm doing. Do I know what I'm doing? Share my screen. So uh, what, what I'm talking about today is a, a brief introduction to GNU Radio uh, by building an FM receiver and software. So um, what is GNU? What is GNU Radio? So GNU Radio is an open source piece of software that does signal processing uh, completely on your computer. So, so completely in the digital domain. Uh, you can use it to do any kind of signal processing from any source. So the source could be, you know, RF that you're pulling in from the air. It could be a file that you have saved. It could be an audio um, recording. It really can be anything. Um, and you can manipulate it and you can do all, do kind of this work uh, interactively. Uh, GNU Radio is super interesting because one, it's open source, it's free. 
it runs on everything. So Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, but what makes it really interesting for us, if we want to kind of dip our, our toe, if we will, into uh, SDR is that it supports SDRs. So as most people are probably familiar uh, with the RTL SDRs, those are the really inexpensive receivers that you can buy. Some of them can be as little as $20. Um, some of them can be hundreds of dollars, but uh, your most basic ones are generally like the one that you see on the right side of this. You know, that's kind of like the $20 one. It's, it's originally meant to watch like TV in Europe or something. Um, frequency ranges for these vary. Some of them start at around 25 megahertz. Some of them go as high as like 2,500 megahertz. Uh, most of the less expensive ones are more in the 50 to maybe 1500 megahertz range. It does vary, uh, but generally out of the box, you're gonna be looking at um, BHF. UHF is your, your most common application. Um, obviously they can get much fancier. The one on the left that I have, that little, uh, the different uh, Newlick model, um, that's like a $30 model. It has a better connector on it that we as hams would, might have adapters for. Um, you know, and it can get up, you know, it, you'll get ones that'll have built-in up converters, so you can do HF, you'll have ones that are much fancier and more expensive. Um, one thing to bear in mind, though, is these are receive only, so you're just receiving analyzing signals, but they're, they're super fun and uh, lots of neat little things you can do with them, and that's what I'm going to use as the source um, for my demo, or for the little build that we're going to show you. So one thing I will recommend for anybody getting into this is definitely get SDR Sharp, that's this software that you're seeing here, SDR Sharp. It is also free. That's the Swiss Army knife of software for playing with these um, SDRs. You can learn a lot about what, what is and isn't capable. Um, here, you know, I have it listening to Worm 106.9, as you can see. Um, it's a nice piece of software. It uh, really lets you experiment a lot and learn what these devices are capable of. And it also helps you visualize pretty easily what's going on and <clears throat> maybe what the limitations are, because there definitely are limitations to these devices. So um, what are we going to do? So if you think about how a lot of us got started in playing with radio, like one of the things you might want to do is build a kit, right? You might want to build a kit that way you can learn about how things work. In this example, I have a picture of an FM radio kit. You know, it's very much a learning exercise uh, to help you understand, um, you know, how radio works. You know, you build a, build a very basic receiver. So we're gonna build a kit, but this time we're gonna build it in software. So we'll do, we're gonna do a basic step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna show you how to build an FM receiver in software in GNU Radio so you can learn kind of how this thing functions. So this is what we're gonna build. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of walk you through um, what we're gonna build. I'll walk you through this first, that way you can kind of understand what we're up to. Um, but then next, I'm going to show you how I put this together. So on this diagram, I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys can see my mouse pointer. On the left, we have this RTL SDR source. So that's our source. That's the USB device that's going to bring the RF into this software. You can see it's got a nice little flow chart. So the signal is going to come out of that source. We're going to send it to a waterfall so we can see what the unfiltered RF looks like, so we can see what's coming in. We're gonna run that through a low pass filter. We're gonna put a filter on it um, because the what we're getting in from the device is sort of a full two megahertz of sample size. So we're gonna chunk, chunk that down. We're just gonna look at sort of a 40K uh, range that's gonna be centered on the FM radio signal that we're gonna be decoding. Then we're gonna output that Again, we'll send it to a waterfall so we can see what that filtered signal looks like compared to the unfiltered signal, just so we can kind of visually see what we're doing. Um, we're gonna send that to an FM receiver. So this FM receiver, the WBFM receive, that's what's gonna decode the FM signal into something intelligible. Then we're gonna send that to a resampler. Um, and you'll notice here, you'll notice these little blocks, these connectors. So the, the data that we're passing is gonna change. These blue ones are, com are called a complex number, and the orange ones are called floats, and just different devices within, uh, within 
can do radio will use either complex numbers or floats. It's it's you you know it's not that uh, complicated. You don't have to worry about it too much, but you do have to match them up. And we'll use um, we can use some of these things like these resamplers and our filters. Most of them, a lot of them have options to do a conversion. So you'll see our decoded FM signals coming out. We're going to resample it down to get something that our audio card can play for us. So in this case, I'm sampling it down to 48 kilohertz. So on the right, I have an audio sync. So I have on the left, I have a source. That's something where signal or whatever it is that we're going to analyze or decode is coming from. And then on the far right, I have a sync. A sync is where it's going to end up, basically. So in this case, it's going to be my sound card. It could be other things. It could be we could write it to a file. We could do a lot of different stuff. We could send it to some something else. Um, but this is our basic FM receiver. So let's uh, let me switch over here to the software. Share that screen. Here we go. So this is the GNU Radio Companion. The GNU Radio in itself is a sort of a command line affair. It uses Python. It's a bit complicated and confusing. This is, um, but GNU Radio Companion is like a UI layer that's built on top of it that lets you build your signal processing in a, in a sort of a more visual manner. It makes it much, much easier and much more accessible. So what I have here is in the center, I have the area that you saw the screenshot of before. This is where we're going to build our, um, our sort of our kit, our FM receiver. Off to the right, I have a list of all of the components that are available within here. So those are the different blocks that I'm going to drag and drop on there. And uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you how those work. So first off, we're going to start, um, I'm going to create a new create a new file here. Um, when you create a new file, you can choose some different options with in terms of GUIs. QT and WX are different styles. I prefer I prefer WX just because the things look look better to me. So I'm going to create a new WX GUI. When I create that, you'll see in the top left there's a little options block that says I'm generating with a WX GUI. I also get a variable and I'll show how these work. You can set and control uh, global variables within here to make things easy. So the first variable is sample rate. Let's see, did I have a? Oh, there we go. Um, so sample rate. Let's set. We're going to set the sample rate. If you remember from my picture before, I was doing a, a two megahertz sample rate. So I'm going to put that uh, in here, and that'll carry across a bunch of different blocks in this and save us having to type in two megahertz every time. Uh, one little thing that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, the GNU Radio Companion does is lets you use a uh, sort of scientific notation for numbers. So instead of typing two with six zeros to get two megahertz, I can just type two E6. So that's two followed by six zeros. I'll save that and you'll see over on the left that variable value will say two M, two megahertz. So let's get our sync. Um, I turned on the search button up here. So let's search. There's a lot of stuff in here, so I just like to search. So I'm going to choose my RTL SDR source and drag and drop him on here. You'll see it picked up the sample rate. So the two megahertz is right there. Uh, you'll also see it's red. So the GNU Radio Companion does a really good job of helping us figure out when we're screwing up, right? So I've created a uh, flow where I have an output that doesn't go anywhere. So, so it's red. So it's warning me something's wrong with this. That's okay. We knew we knew something was wrong with it. But you'll just note that um, is super helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. Now I'm editing the properties of this box in the flow chart. So you'll see sample rate is set to samp rate, which is this variable, the one that we put two megahertz in. The frequency is set here. So this is going to be the frequency that it's receiving at. I'm going to set it to 106.9, not because it's my favorite radio station. It's just very, very strong at my house, uh, so it makes a great demo. So I just put 106.9 E6, right? So that's 106.9 megahertz. Um, one other quirky thing, this doesn't happen in all versions of GNU Radio, but in the most recent version, 
um, I do need to do a little RTL equals zero. Um, the RTL dongles often have two potential sources, so zero and one. So I'm just going to tell it I want to use zero. <clears throat> I want to use zero. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, the output type is a complex. Um, on a lot of these, you can change it. On this one, you can't. It's always going to be a complex. So it's going to be blue. So we'll set that now. So now we have a source. It's going to bring us a sample size of 2 megahertz, and it's going to be centered on 106.9 because everybody loves adult contemporary music. So <clears throat> first off, now here, this is, this is what I think is really great about this GNU Radio Companion. It makes learning really easy. So I'm going to drop a waterfall on here. My computer's a little slow. I think video and this, it doesn't like, but I guess that's another note. I'm doing this on a very low end uh, laptop and it works pretty well. So now what I've done is I just clicked on this output and I clicked on the input. So now I've connected these. So my source is going to the waterfall and you'll notice um, the red went away. So if I delete this connection, these are red. See how they're red? That's great. Like, so it's telling me like, hey, Something's wrong. You have a sink that has no source and you have a source that has no output. So I click, I just click on the output, I click on the input, and now they're hooked up and it's beautiful and it's happy. And you'll also note this one, I double clicked on it. We're looking at the properties of the waterfall. Um, it inherited the sample rate, so it's set by the variable. It's all the same, which is nice. Um, so I don't have to enter that. Um, so usually this just works. So let's let's save it. FM receiver and let's um, yeah, let's run it. So I'm just going to go up top here and I'm going to click execute. I could also click on this little play button here. Hopefully it's going to work. It's a live demo. <laughs> Your live demos sometimes fail. Oh no, it's running. So I went. I I pulled up the command window. So now we can see. Now it's running. I don't have any audio, right? Because we haven't done anything with audio. But you can see the waterfall. You can see it centered on uh, that 106.9, which, as I mentioned, is a really strong station. You can see there's another station over David, here. David, we, we can't see. We're, we're only seeing the uh, scratch area. Or the, okay, hold on. Yeah, let me change my sharing mode because it popped up a new window. Uh, just bear with me. I'm a... You're doing awesome. Thank you. This is a great, <laughs> great demo. Yeah, I think I need to share. Hmm. Oh, let me just share. I'm going to share my whole screen. That's my problem. Yeah, that, that's the best way to go. Yeah, I was sharing a window instead of a screen. So, so here's the waterfall. Hopefully everybody can see that. So that's running. The, the source, our source is going into the waterfall. So now we can really quickly see what's going on, right? We can visualize like, okay, I can see exactly what's going on. It's centered on that frequency that I set it for, which as I mentioned is a super strong station. I can play with this thing. Uh, if you don't like the way it looks, you can change how it looks. It's pretty cool. Um, a lot of a lot of bells and whistles here, but but you can see we've got a, so now we know it's working, right? So we've got, we've got a signal coming in. So I'm going to kill this off. Let's move our little, keep our, keep our, uh, our little workflow here looking nice and clean. So the first thing we're going to do is we need a filter, right? You guys saw all that, you know, you got two megahertz of bandwidth, all that junk. We don't want that. We just want our, our radio station. We just want our adult contemporary. So I'm going to choose a low pass filter. Throw this guy on here. Again, it's red. It's red and angry because it's not connected to anything. So I'm going to connect it. So I connect the output to the input. And then I'm going to go in here. The sample rate is still going to be 2 megahertz, but we don't want all that stuff. So I'm just going to set the cutoff and the transition width to just uh, 40K. We're going to narrow this down. And then what we'll do is we'll throw, let's just throw, we'll throw another waterfall in there so we can see visually, like, what did we do? You know, did we do? Do we do what we thought we were going to do? Like, I think I know what I'm doing, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to run this thing again. And now we're going to have two plots, two waterfall uh, sinks running. It pops up.
There it goes. So at the bottom, we have our RF input, which we saw before. And at the top, we have our signal that's gone through the low pass filter. So this one at the top is what went through the low pass filter. And you can see we put a 40K kind of filter on this guy so we can see we're only getting the center. We actually may not be getting the whole station. Maybe 40K is a little too tight. Um, Was that really a band pass filter than a low pass filter? Does it cut out all the stuff above it? Yeah. Um, so it's it's called a it's called a low pass filter, but the reality is the way I'm using it is more like a band pass filter. Um, I don't know if they have one that's literally called a band pass filter. Um, oh yes, there is. Yeah. I don't know how how it. Yeah. Could we could do that instead? I don't know what that would look like. There, I'll throw it in here real quick, just because. I've been usually using the low pass filter because it sort of just did what I wanted. I think you'll find um, you guys can very quickly get to the limits of my knowledge on this. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see if, if that does what I think it does. We'll run that. When this is running in the background, I remember I mentioned um, under the covers, can do radios really like all Python and command lines and stuff. Oh, I don't think that filter will work the way I thought it worked. Looks like we have nothing. Um, no, it looked like the first one you were using more of a notch filter to cut it out and then, or to bandpass filter, it was kind of the way you wrote it. This one I think would have required you to put in 100 megahertz and the next one 100 and mm. like eight megahertz or something, or 100 and 0.8, because he wanted that section of the bandpass, but I will not say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that way is probably like more correct. Sorry, I closed. I accidentally closed uh, uh, the GNU Radio Companion, so I got to restart it here. Mine's chock full of errors. I just installed this yesterday on this computer and spews all these errors when I start it, but then it works great. So I haven't bothered to figure out why. It's very. This is pretty common in open source software, though. You get a lot of crazy warnings, and then it doesn't ends up not mattering. And it's extra, extra slow because I'm doing I'm doing the video sharing. So normally this starts up in about a quarter of this time. Hey David, just a, a note here. I am going to have to leave at 11:30. So I have made you a co-host, um, Dave KB7PSN. You're also a co-host, Phil K7PIA. You're also a co-host. So we can keep this meeting running um, with you guys as co-hosts and all of the screens, you can control things and just keep this uh, meeting going uh, till as long as you want. And uh, each one of those co-hosts, the three co-hosts, you can also assign other people co-host and keep the meeting going. Um, but I do need to leave in 15 minutes. So back to net. All right. Thank you. Let's see if I've, uh, if I've put this back together. We're going to rerun it again and just make sure we're back to, uh, to where we were before. Okay. We're back to where we were before. We've got our input. We've got our filtered. Our filter is working, even though I don't totally understand why. That's okay. Never stopped me before. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's decode, let's decode the FM. Let's throw a receiver in there. So we're gonna put in a, a wideband FM receiver, right? So there is a narrow band FM receiver also in here. So imagine if you were doing something with your, uh, maybe monitoring a repeater or something or fun stuff like that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna throw the FM wideband receiver in here. Now the wideband, the, the receiver doesn't need everything. So I'm gonna uh, I'm put 500K in here. It also doesn't need um, as many, all the samples in order to successfully decode the FM signal. So I'm gonna set audio decimation to four. So that basically means that I'm only gonna be getting a quarter of everything that's coming from the source, but that's okay because we don't need it to, we don't need all that to decode um, the FM signal. And then I do want to throw in, I'm gonna throw in a rational resampler because we changed modes here. So we switched from uh, bringing in complex uh, to outputting uh, 
float. So we're going to go oh, float, float, float. Um, this is because our um, audio sync wants floats. Our audio card wants floats. It doesn't doesn't like those complex numbers. So the what the rational resampler is for is my um, audio card, my audio sync, um, the bit rate doesn't need to be or can't in some cases can't be as high as the signal that we've we've got here. So my audio sync needs a is not going to operate at this, the two two megahertz sample rate. It's going to operate at something lower. Um, in this case, let's make it uh, 48k. Should be good enough to listen to the radio. Um, and then I need to use my rational resampler to take this um, signal that I've got coming out of my receiver and chunk it down to that 48k. So, so there's just a little bit of basic math go that goes on here. So I've got I'm interpolate uh, 48, and then I think if I put 500 in there, um, I think that ends up with the right number. I'll double check my notes. Um, so now I should have an FM receiver that will actually work. Let's run this thing again. This is running it in the background. I don't know where the sound is going because I'm not hearing anything. Let's see. Oh, that's not sound. That's Wi-Fi. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I think you guys might just have to trust me on this one because I don't know in this sharing session where where my audio ends up. Um, so, David, um, you could try changing using the microphone, the up arrow, and seeing if it's in that list. I know Phil and I both have flex radios, and you see all those extra drivers. Yeah, so. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's, you're hearing it through my headset. Thank you. Hi, oh. hey, it's Michael Jackson. That's pretty cool. Right? So, um, yeah, so it works. That's good. Let me turn Michael Jackson down. So you can see, um, you know, we just built a really simple receiver. In fact, you know, two of these boxes, you know, we don't need to be there in order to listen to the audio. Um, but you can get an idea of kind of how, you know, in this software domain, how you can kind of start playing around with things. And you can really get a good visual. I'll show you, since we have a, you guys will bear with me for a few more minutes, I'll show you some tips and, and some things you can do um, in here to make your experimentation a little easier. So before I mentioned, we have a variable sample rate, right? And that variable is carried across all of these things that have sample rate. We can also um, add other variables. So for example, I could throw in another variable and I might say, I don't know, what's something that's good? How about, um, how about to filter uh, bandwidth? So I could put another variable in here, say filter filter bandwidth. Um, I think I could define that variable somewhere. I called it, I called it variable zero. Sorry, I did it wrong. That's the name. <laughs> filter bandwidth. And this is the value. So I could set this to 50K. And then I can go in here and I could set this to filter bandwidth, just like we did with sample rate. So I have a value that I want to change in one place and have it carry across multiple. So now if I go back to here and I change filter bandwidth to say 45,000, you see it changes. Um, I can make those uh, settings across all of these things. Another thing I can do is um, I can add sliders. So this is pretty cool. And sliders can operate in real time. So I can throw in a slider and I could say, um, let's have a slider. I'm gonna delete, let's delete uh, our filter bandwidth variable. And then let's create a slider called filter bandwidth and make its default value 50K with a minimum of zero and a maximum of, I don't know, let's make a maximum 50,000, a thousand steps so we can play with it. So now um, filter bandwidth is gonna be on a slider. 
So when I run this, it's going to add a, a little GUI slider to our to our window that had our waterfalls. And it put it puts it up here at the top. So now I have this filter bandwidth with a default value of 50k. So now I can actually mess with this filter in real time. So you can see I just I opened it up to 159k. You can see how our, the behavior of our filter is changing. I can crank it down. Um, so you can play with these values in real time. Um, and then since you have your waterfalls, you can you can see what's going on. It's very easy to do that um, and then manipulate that value across here. Another obvious thing I could do, you know, great use for a slider here would be, um, how about a frequency, right? So um, create a slider called frequency, make the default value 106.9. Uh, what's the minimum FM band? It's 88, right? And the maximum is what, 108? Yeah, I think that's right. And then the number of steps, uh, 200. That sounds about right. So now we can go into our, our RTL SDR source and change frequency to FM frequency and apply that thing and then run this guy. People are probably asking me questions that I'm ignoring. Uh, okay. Chat room is good. Yes. Uh, to answer Jim's question, uh, yes, this could monitor uh, repeaters. I, I wouldn't use a repeater for a demo like this, you know, because they're not always outputting something. But sure, you could. Um, you might want to change the antenna. Um, did I break? I think I broke this. I don't think it's working. Or maybe it is working. I don't know. Sometimes you can break this. Oh, there it goes. It's working. It's just in the background. So now the frequ FM frequency slider is at the top here. So we could change our uh, change our station. So you slide this guy around. That's another station. I never listen. Never listen to the radio. Oh, there we go. There's a weak one. 102.5 KZOK. 102. Point, I think if I type, oh wait, that's gigahertz. <laughs> 102.5. Crazy okay. There we go. Let's um let's listen to it real quick. Oh yeah, it's working. Maybe open that filter up. I don't know, it sounds about the same. It's FM, right? So you get the idea. <laughs> See, Sam. Sam raised his hand. Did Sam have a question? Uh, FM broadcast bandwidth is 150 kilohertz. You ought to change that filter. Get better uh -oh. audio. Uh -oh. I was just going to add that myself. Uh, plus or minus <laughs> 75 kilohertz. If you, um, oh, okay. I mean, uh, yeah. If you go down narrower than that, it's just going to sound like uh, it can. It does on a cell phone. <laughs> All right. Well, you change. I'll change the default. I'm gonna change the default value to 150 um, on the filter bandwidth, and we'll we'll rerun it and see if it sounds better. How about that? Maybe I have a 10 ear. Oh, it does. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds beautiful. There we go. Oh, you learn something every day. You had to get the guard band in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stop him. So a couple other, just a couple other quick things. Um, that um, that UI, the way it li lays out, can be controlled. Um, so we can go in here. This is a little obscure. You have a grid position field, so we can control um, that. We can we can put. Titles on these, so uh, we could call this maybe unfiltered RF. Um, maybe put it at the top. I think it goes row, column, span, span. So like it would be row zero, column one, 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 something like that. Um, so we can actually you can actually lay out these little windows. So we could call the second one. We could call it filtered RF, and we could say it's 
row one, column one. Row one. Um, we can control this, the sliders. We can do the same thing. So we could put um, row two, one, one. We can put the frequency slider at the bottom, and then we can put the bandwidth slider at the the very bottom. This should work. It's a little bit of an obscure topic, but uh, you can, can control how those things lay out. You can also lay them out side by side. So you could put something in column two. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see our frequency sliders down at the bottom, our bandwidth sliders down at the bottom. There are some good options here. But that's basically it. Um, does anybody have any more questions? I'm going to put some links. I'm going to put some links in here uh, to all the things that I used. I'll put them in the chat um, so you can so you know where where I got this stuff. Um, and that's it. David, thanks a lot. That's a great, great demo. I've always wondered how to do the GNU radio stuff. I tried playing around with it one time, and it just was over my head. And I'm going to have to watch yeah. your watch your presentation here, replay it again, because that, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, there's a few things that are a little obscure and confusing. Um, but I think once you can kind of it's the kind of thing where I think if you get a little hint, you know, you get a little taste of like, oh, okay, um, you know, here's what should be possible. And you get a few of these, these minor hints on like wh how things work and what's where and what does this mean? Um, I think you can, you can kind of uh, make some progress. And also, like I said, these RTL SDR dongles are really great for just learning about this, you know, and then hopefully at a future date, you can, you know, bring, fancier applications to this so David, mark i got a question who's who's uh, the general people that use this where what was its origin who kind of conglomerated all of the pieces together uh, make, makes me wish that antenna simulations were this easy <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I don't know that much of the history of, of GNU Radio. I'll tell you, I can tell you how I got into it. Um, I got into it when uh, we had the repeater abuser, you know, the one of which we don't speak. Um, and I had a theory that, so I had recorded, so I was recording the repeater. So I had a lot of audio and I had a theory about, I had been looking at the recordings that I made and I, I noticed something. I noticed that the PL tone that your radio transmits is, it comes through the repeater. In other words, it's in, in the, the signal that we get from the repeater, your sub audible tones were in there. And I started noticing that um, different radios had different patterns in their PL tones. So especially cheap radios. So Baofengs in particular tend to have, um, their PL tones tend to have, uh, you know, um, secondary and, and third um, harmonics. Harmonics, yes, that's the word I was looking for. And I got this idea that you could identify someone's radio by measuring the frequency of the, the, the very specific frequency of their PL tone. Cause there are also variations. Like you say, Oh, I set my PL tone to 103.5 or whatever, but actually that varies slightly and the number of harmonics varies slightly and the, the frequency differences between those harmonics vary very slightly. So I got this great idea. If I could feed all this audio into something and find these frequencies, then I could create a fingerprint of someone's radio. Um, and then if I had a fingerprint of someone's radio and I could get enough recordings from our repeater and from different repeaters, could I catch the, the people who are the person who's misbehaving that one time that they were behaving, right? So like all I would need to do is catch one recording. Um, so I was using GNU radio to do that. Um, and I failed spectacularly. I never, never got it working reliably. <laughs> <laughs> you learned along, a lot. Yeah, but along the way, I learned some other things. Um, I still think that that might, I still think that idea is something is there. Um, Boeing actually has a patent on 
uh, transmitter ID. And another company has, I forget who, has a patent on transmitter ID, but however, what they're fingerprinting is the beginning of the transmission. So apparently every radio has kind of a, a, if you could analyze the beginning of the transmission, every radio has kind of fingerprint in how like the signal ramps up. Um, and somebody else has a patent on, hey, on that one. Hey, David, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, first of all, Scott has his hand raised. So um, I need to stop the recording and jump out of this meeting because I need to okay. go to the church and do the same thing. We're going to live stream um, our church service tomorrow at, um, wow. uh, at 11. So I need to go and work on that. So, right. um, David, WA7DY, thank you for your presentation. You are a co-host. David, KB7PSN, you are a co-host. Phil, K7PIA, you are a co-host. So feel free to keep this going. I'm going to stop the recording and I will share it later on.